Hey everybody, welcome back to New Venus Channel. And today we're looking into issues with Pina that you might have encountered, but they might have just gone by unnoticed. So let's look into these three common things that you want to refactor after the video. Here we go. As the main state management tool when it comes to Vue.js application, Pina is of course commonly used. And probably use it too if you have like a medium to large size application. Maybe not, that's of course fully up to you and your needs. But if you use it, then there are a few things that we should take a look at that you might do wrong or let's say less optimal, but some of them can cause actual problems. The third one, the third thing you might do wrong, especially when it comes to Nuxt.js. But let's get started quite simple with a little demo stored application. In our demo application, we have a store that holds the user. So all information around that, right? A typical example for global state. And this is called use user store. And with this, we already start straight away. If you write your application with the composition API, which is, well, nowadays the most common approach and the future, right? So you don't have any options API in there, then that what we've seen is not ideal because Pina has two ways of writing stores. One of them is the option store, which is in our demo application right now. And of course, if you use the composition API anywhere else, then why not also writing it in this style? Because you can write your Pina store also as a setup store. So let's quickly migrate this store here with state, some getters, some actions over to a very simple setup store. And all you need to do is first of all, make this whole thing here a function. So we don't have options anymore, like an option store, but functions. And then we can get started straight away. For state, we want to remove most of these nested things in here. There is no global state object. And we of course can just say, okay, we have things that should be refs. So let's wrap them around. We remove the state part over here and we set some default values. Of course, you want to add some TypeScript types if you want to make sure, all right, what uh, should be in these refs for the name, email, and for all the primitive types, this is simply inferred. But of course, that can only work if you don't have multiple values or yeah, if it's a primitive value in here. So for example, for user ID, we can set it to string or null by using the generic from the ref as you know it from the composition API already. And now we're almost good to go for the state because these are just simple variables now. We don't have a state object anymore. With the getters, well, all of the getters we can take and transform into computer properties because these are nothing else than that. So let's quickly do this for, for example, the display name. We just wrap computed around that and say, all right, now we don't need the state anymore because there is no state object. And instead of state.name, we could just say name, but don't forget the dot value here because it's a ref. And the same would also apply to the other functions here. Of course, to keep the video short, I'll just refactor it off screen. We don't have to see me typing all the time, right? So here are the results over there. We have refactored all of these to compute it. It's pretty simple by using the refs instead of a state dot whatsoever from before. Okay, so far so good. Now with the actions, well, luckily, this is also not too complicated. Now we have a lot of this in here, which is of course not a thing in a setup store. So maybe let's do the whole thing for the login function. We start by just removing this actions wrapper and then we get a lot of more red squiggly lines, but it's fine. And we go up here and say, okay, this is now a function keyword, function login, and here we are. Of course, now the problem starts that the this doesn't exist, but luckily we can fully remove it. The only thing we have to consider is that now we want to set things from ref. So we set dot value over here on the left-hand side and we're good to go. And that's that for, for the function itself. It's mainly adding the function keyword and ideally you don't have to change much except changing this for the dot value from the refs. And same also with the other functions. Of course, we also skip that here just to make sure that you don't have to see me typing refactoring this because come on, if you have refactored a v2 to v3 application before, for example, you know how things go. Otherwise, you see the result. Any questions, drop them in the comments, you know. Okay, here we are. We refactored all these things. Oh, well, I did it, right? But there's one more thing we should do. We should return all of these like you had to do it with out using the script setup part in your components. Because when a composition API came out, there was a way to just say we have a setup function and return all the things that might be needed. So in a setup store in Pinya, you still have to do that. But luckily, it's not complicated. Just list all the things up and uh, we'll see that right here. 
you wonder, okay, why should I migrate things from the option store over to a setup store in your application? Well, if you use the composition API anyway, it just aligns very well with how you write code. And also code organization, especially in a bigger store is easier. And there is yet another thing, which is the second thing you do wrong and um, might do wrong. And that's the usage of composables in your Pina stores. Because with setup stores, it's a little bit easier to use them. You can use them everywhere, almost, right? But top level everywhere. With option stores, it's a bit trickier. So let's have a look at that. Taking a look at our old file, so the option store we've just migrated, if you want, want to use a composable, say something like, I don't know, use mouse or something, then we can't really do this in getters or actions. Though it's very common that people do this. They do something like, I don't know, const whatsoever is use mouse, right? From, I don't know, view use or anything else and then, then use things here. But that's not good because this function is not really called in a view or next context. For example, you could call it when, I don't know, clicking an event handler and whatnot. And I've made a whole video about that, for example, on, on use fetch and why you might use it wrong. And it's the same idea here. You have to call composables in the top level context of your component or another composable. And in some exceptions and lifecycle hooks, but usually that's not the case. So where can we do this in option stores then? Well, in option stores, we make sure to call them only in the state function here. So what you could do is say, I don't know, if you have a mouse coordinates over here, then you can say, okay, I'll just call uh, use mouse and take the values out here. That's fully possible. But then the problem starts if, let's say, uh, use mouse returns a function that you want to use and so on, so on. So it can get a bit more tricky. Still, of course, you can reference that and there it's totally fine. But everywhere else in actions and getters, it's a big no-no. All right, great. Now that we've taken a look at our option store, let's uh, check out the setup store and see where we can call composables there. And as I said before, we can call composables anywhere we want, actually, except in, we got it again, functions. Because then the same logic as with normal composables applies. You call things as in composables, top level, and it's all good. And on that point, I just want to give like a, let's say, three and a half part <laughs> in terms of mistakes you can do with Pina. Because if you have a setup store like we have right here, organizing your code is super important. Taking a look at is logged in, for example, is logged in is not related to, well, most of the functions except the login function. So we don't have to initialize it up here. We can move it way closer to the login function where it's actually used. And of course, it's also used in something like logout and so on, so on. So maybe it would be good to bring also logout closer to login and the fetch user function, which is just some async operation code for later on, is not that important anymore. Then the preferences stuff, of course, is related and stuck together. So also on that, it's very important to make sure that you bring code that is semantically and just logically close together. Well, you also co-locate that, right? You want to bring it as close to rated code as possible. I made a whole video on that called uh, Organizing Code with the Composition API. Link is in the description as well. We talk about inline composables, so not only for your Pina stores, but the same concept can be applied there. But now back to the final problem, which you might encounter, and that's the integration with Nuxt. It is very common that you start with a store, let's say the user store that we just used, and of course, we want to straight away set it up and have it here. And commonly you say user store and then maybe initialize things like fetching a user, some async operation. Now, of course, when using Nuxt.js and things like server-side rendering, you want to make sure that this doesn't run twice, right? You only want to run it once, either only on the server and then transmitting the data over to the client, or you just want to run it on the client, and um, that's fine too, but not all the times. And to make sure this is happening, well, people usually say, okay, especially in Nuxt ecosystem, you should use something like use fetch, or as we don't really fetch here, but use a function, use async data. And commonly you say, okay, nice, here's some kind of uh, function and we're good. Then we commonly await that or not, depending on needs, and that's fine. Now, here comes the problem, because this is not the way to go. There are a few issues here. First of all, use async data is meant to be side effect free. So you should not change anything else in your application than doing a fetching request. So if you have some temp variables in your fetching function, that's fine. But in this case, we do a side effect, which means we could change a ref, or in this case, well, we change ref in a Pina store somehow by setting, okay, 
here we set the user after fetching things. This is not really what use async data is there for. And the other issue is that if your function doesn't return anything, then use async data will always be executed. So accidentally, you have some kind of double data fetching, though you try to avoid that. So let's see how we can fix that. For the last mentioned problems, a lot of people just say, okay, you know what, we have then, and then we just say return one or something. We can, of course, omit the return, we can just do this. And this returns one, and we don't use it anymore, we don't need the result, and we execute the side effect. But as mentioned, we really don't want to use async data in this case, because it should be side effect free. So what do we do here? Well, the answer is we can use call once. Call once is doing what the function name actually says. It's a utility to call a method just once. You can pass in the key if you want, but you don't have to, that's up to you. Of course you can if you have multiple ways and want to really make sure that things are just called once. And then you can even omit the whole then one problem. Now, if you wonder, okay, but what is happening with the hydration part and transmitting data? Luckily, Pina stores, well, when you use them with SSR, they have their own hydration mechanism. So it's all good. You can just use them and Pina will deal with the rest. And commonly, when I suggest to people, okay, look, call once is the way to go. Then after a while of trying things out, they say, but look, Alex, this doesn't really mimic the behavior of use async data. I want exactly that to be in sync with all my other data fetching calls. Because what happens now is that the user is fetched once. And if you navigate to another page and back, it won't be re-executed because, well, the user is fetched once, just once for the whole lifetime. Of course, if you do a hard refresh, different story, but other than that, once. Now, use async data is executed every time when you like switch from A to B. Fun fact, this was never planned like that, but right now, due to some history, it is like that, and it might be changed in the future at some point. We don't know. But back to track here, what can we do to mimic the same behavior? And that's what I was wondering for quite a while, because I wanted to give all the Nuxt users something that can be used like use async data behavior-wise, so you don't have to like wonder, oh, why is this doing things differently? But still, it also should be used as intended, not like use async data in this case. And well, the result is pretty simple. We have another options object here and can just say mode navigation. By default, the mode is render or just omitted, which means just once on rendering. But with that navigation mode, you make sure that all the time when the page switches, call once, well, the function will be just re-executed. And the side effect, in this case, fetching the user will be properly executed again. So you have use async data-like behavior without the overhead and, well, wrongly using it. And you even have the choice. Do you really want to just once for like setting up things that you want to set up and not globally in a plugin, but in general? But um, yeah, that's that's fully up to you now. I'm also planning to make a whole dedicated video on the call once part actually for all the next users out there. Let me know if you're interested in that. And also let me know if, well, you had any of these issues and were like, oh yeah, I, I should really fix that composable part in my application or switch out use async data for call once. I'm really curious, uh, drop the things in the comments, and of course, check out the latest Deja View episode, which is uh, all about Fusion, the fusion of Laravel and Vue with uh, the one only Aaron Francis. Other than that, of course, take a look at the older videos, and otherwise, see you in the next one. Happy hacking. <laughs>